Fed up, fed up, now it's time to eat. Fed up, fed up. Welcome Pasta to my kitchen again. Today, we're going to do a big one. This is uh, a, 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 just, a, just a culinary staple in, in gourmet dining. This is a dish named after Arthur Wellesley. He was the first Duke of Wellington, and he was the guy who put the smack to Napoleon at Waterloo. It's Beef Wellington, and this is a good one. Okay, follow with me, and I will show you how to do this step by step. First thing we want to do is make a mushroom duxelle. Okay, that goes in, and we want to chop the mushrooms. I have one already made here because we have to put it in, cook it up, but I want to show you how to chop the mushrooms. You get mushrooms, shallots, and a little bit of thyme and salt and pepper. Nice flat surface for the mushroom. Take your knife, comfortable, fingers in, and just chop. Okay, I have some already chopped here. I also have shallot. Okay, shallot is kind of like cross, at least I think, cross between an onion and garlic. And I put that into my compost there. I have a little compost container back here for organic material. Keep that, or I can save it for stock. Shallot, flat surface. Chop, okay? Practice that. Let me get this back on here. And time, fresh time. What I wanna do is just get this into a hot frying pan. You can see I've got smoke going on here. This is good and hot. Cook it off until it becomes about like this. Okay, nice and brown, a little salt and pepper, you'll start smelling a real earthy smell. And that's the duck cell that goes on the top. Next thing we're going to do here is our puff pastry. Puff pastry works best cold. So keep it cold as long as you can. Roll that out, open it up. When I roll things out, I use my Home Depot rolling dowel, okay? This thing, I think I paid about $3 for it and I cut it in half, it's an oak rolling dowel. And a little bit of bench flour here to prevent this from sticking. And then we'll, see that? That's why you want the flour. A little bit on here. All right. Just kind of roll this out. Now, as I'm rolling this out, what I want to do is take my filet. This is a tenderloin of beef. Okay. This is about, not, not quite eight ounces. I'm going to put a little bit of salt on there. Work that in. And a little cracked black pepper. All right. And that's going to go right into Mr. Smokey here. All right. Having fun here. I want to get this rolled out. Roll, roll, roll. And when that gets assembled, okay, we will put the duck cell right down in here, like this. Put that over here. I'm going to set this on the side here until we need it. Potatoes here. I have some uh, red potatoes that I've used that I'm making a red potato mash with and I'm going to garnish with some chives. What I've done in the interest of time is to have already cut and boiled and mashed some but I just wanted to show you take these potatoes cut them to about this size and then if uh, you put them in boiling water for about 15 minutes, they'll be the proper consistency for mashing. And I'm going to keep these over here because I'll need those chives for later. Now, my tongs here. Beautiful. Look at that. You just want to get this browned off. Put my fan up a little bit here. Brown that. I have one already in the oven. I'm going to knock that out there. I'm going to take this over here. Okay. 
that's going to go right on top there just like that now one thing we want to do at this point start an egg wash egg wash is important because it helps keep the, uh, the, the dough together and it also gives a nice color on the finished product put a little shot of water in there just like that we got this now one I like doing beef Wellington because to me this is like this is like culinary Christmas you know you're wrapping up a package here and I like to leave a little bit of this on the bottom as, as sort of a like a like a base you'll get a nice crust there you see how I did that just wrapped it up no problem right. and also you can kind of get fancy here maybe make a little this and then maybe just some roll it out little fancy design on here anything you want score it whatever you get the idea take a little sheet pan here just a touch of no stick you don't need a lot because the puff pastry has a good deal of butter in it set this on here like this we want to get our egg wash and put that on pretty good just like that paint that up this is going to go in a 350 oven for just about 20 minutes and I have one it's already in there we're going to take that out plate it up I have some asparagus that we're going to serve with it the mashed potatoes I have a little salad that I've made with it and as soon as I get this cleared off we're going to plate it up and show you what this thing looks like okay fed up fed up now it's time to eat fed up fed up okay, pasta so fish the last thing I want to do with this is put the asparagus in I have some boiling water and the asparagus goes really quick. In fact, there's a story that I read once back in ancient Rome. I guess the Romans really loved asparagus. I don't know who he was or his name, but there was supposedly an emperor who he was, he was very quick with justice and he would dispatch condemned prisoners rather quickly. And the story went that I think it was he, 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 would, he would carry out execution sentences quicker than it uh, in less time than it took to cook asparagus so that should give you an idea maybe uh, I guess if this guy did it quick how long it takes to cook asparagus you don't need to cook it long while that's in I'm gonna go ahead and pull out our Wellington and this is one that I had done before and can you see that and that was in for about 20 minutes at 350 degrees I like to try to get it to about a medium rare to medium, okay? And that will just come off of there. And I want to put that on there just like that. Very regal cut of meat. <clears throat> From here, I'm going to take these are the potatoes that I mashed. I don't want to do a big helping of this simply because you have the puff pastry and you don't need to go overboard on the starch. And throw some chives on that. Now my asparagus should be just about finished. And This is usually a dish that's reserved for special occasions, weddings, things like that. And I know a lot of people might get fed up or frustrated thinking, wow, you know, I have to wait for somebody to get married or 
uh, graduation or some kind of special occasion to be able to enjoy a, uh, a beef wellington like this? It's not true. You can do this right at home. Puff pastry can get in the frozen food section. Uh, that's all I did. Let's go ahead, put a little garnish on there and pretty it up a little bit. Oh, I want to put a little bit of lemon zest on the on the asparagus. If I can get my lemon zester, that's just the, the skin, the outside part. Just as a little decoration and a little bit of salt and clean the plate up with this. I like to serve a big red wine. Uh, this is a Napa Valley Cabernet. There it is, Beef Wellington. Don't get frustrated, don't get fed up. Don't have to sit around and wait for somebody to get married or somebody to graduate or somebody to be born or a special occasion, the Academy Awards, whatever it may be. You can do this at home. Beef right now is inexpensive. Asparagus, it's asparagus season. It's inexpensive. Have fun, enjoy. Remember, you don't need to be fed up. You just need to be fed. So make it good. Fed up, fed up, Frank will show you why. Fed up, fed up, Frank so shepherds buy. It's time to eat, it's time to eat. So grab your fork and take your seat. Frank will show you how to cook a meal they can't eat.